Singapore is raising water prices for the first time since 2017 as the cost of producing and supplying the resource goes up. The 18% hike will be split over two phases, but essentially, you'll have to pay 50 cents more per cubic meter by April 2025. Now, the government has pledged to support lower and middle income households as well as businesses with the additional costs. Deputy Prime Minister Lawrence Wong is slated to announce relief measures tomorrow. Now, the first increase will kick in next April at 20 cents per cubic meter. This will raise the price of water to $2.94 per unit. The second increase of 30 cents will come a year later, bumping up the price to $3.24. Now, homes that consume more than 40 cubic meters a month will see a 70 cent hike per unit. The hikes include the tariff that covers the costs of producing water, the conservation tax to encourage judicious use, and the waterborne tax for collecting and treating used water. PUB says costs have jumped since the last price hike in 2017, and it's been operating on a deficit. Electricity tariffs, construction costs and chemicals all logging a more than 30% increase. Maintenance expenses rose 18%. So what do the water price hikes mean for all of us? CNA's Rebecca Mateo explains. For Singaporeans living in smaller HDB flats, the 50 cent hike once implemented would translate into about a $4 increase in their monthly bill. For residents in three and four room flats like myself, we'll have to fork out six to eight dollars more. Now, households in larger units like five-room flats and maisonettes will have to pay an additional $9 more a month, and for those staying in private condos, around $7 more. But Singaporeans may also feel a slight pinch when they're out and about buying stuff. Like a cup of coffee. For a bit of perspective, a cup this size will set you back another 0.01 cent, while a bottle of water like this could cost about 0.025 cent more. As to the impact on hawkers, PUB says three out of four would see an increase of less than $15 in their monthly water bill, while most companies would pay less than $25 more. So, to help households manage the water price hikes, the government says it will soon announce additional financial help, especially for lower- and middle-income households, and this will come on top of current support for water-saving efforts. Households in one- to three-room HDB flats can currently apply for e-vouchers under a program that helps pay for installing water-efficient shower fittings. Now, this support will later extend to other appliances that help conserve water. PUB says water bills account for less than 2% of household spending and less than 5% of business costs for most companies. Some companies are already taking steps to use less water every month. Rebecca Mateo spoke to an industry player which has invested about $50,000 to recycle used water. And that's just a tip of the iceberg. This room is where some 20 million electronic connectors used in items like laptops are produced every day. Because many chemicals are used in this electroplating process, it requires a huge amount of water to rinse off. But IPEX says it has put in place measures that's cut its water consumption by half to around 650 cubic metres. One of our recent initiatives is to reuse the RO water, uh, reject water from our water treatment plant to cooling tower at the rooftop uh, where it supplies the water for our air compressors and all the air conditioning systems. But water saving measures require both large upfront investments in water efficient technology and systems as well as maintenance costs. Another challenge that we face uh, is to upgrade our infrastructure for the pumping and uh, equipment to improve our water efficiency. That's where the government can step in to help offset some of the costs of updates, upgrades and repairs. Companies can tap on support like the Water Efficiency Fund to help them save and recycle water for their operations. To give some examples, they can carry out a pilot study, a water efficiency assessment or even adopt an equipment that can help them save water. 
Sectors like wafer fabrication, semiconductors and pharmaceuticals are expected to form the bulk of water demand over the next few decades. These are water-intensive industries that a country sees as critical to its economic growth. One expert tells CNA it's all about striking a balance. Pushing them away of Singapore wouldn't solve absolutely anything. What you have to do is to integrate your development plan, socio-economic development plan. Who do I want Singapore to be in 100 years after independence? That you have your industrial base and that it is efficient, that it doesn't pollute, that it doesn't deplete resources. That is what you want. To that end, the government is requiring all new projects in these water-intensive industries to recycle water on-site for reuse starting next year.